मेरा नाम रमला है एंड आई एम अ सिंगल मदर ऑफ अ नाइन ईयर ओल्ड आई एम अ लॉयर एंड आई एम अ प्रोफेशनल मॉडल एंड अ फिटनेस मॉडल I studied from the University of London International Programs and did my masters from UC Berkeley USA. I identify myself as a human rights activist and a human rights advocate which means that I want an equal and fair world for all. I also identify myself as a mental health activist and somebody who wants to promote animal rights in Pakistan. I am me and my daughter are the center of my universe as you, I have made a collage for you all we are the center of my universe and our life is full of love laughter and happiness mashallah but that's the narrative that i will give you of my life and my story let me tell you what people around me in the society will give you the kind of narrative that they have of me they'll start off with using words like bichari talaq shuda and the tail old classic apna ghar nahi basa saki and uske alawa aur bhi bahut si cheeze bolenge for example um, maa baap pe bojh hai aur umar badhti chali ja rahi hai and these people every time they meet me they're always looking for those reasons why iski talaq kyun hui thi and interestingly when me and my daughter you know in our own element we're living our lives having a ball and when they meet us um they don't understand why we're so happy in our lives and why our life is so fulfilling and their immediate response is she's faking it either that or she's delusional and that is who we are as a society that is who we are as people it is so alien for us to see that anyone who's living a life outside of that textbook definition of a good and happy life can actually have a good and a happy life and i realized this that many people around me didn't really understand what a happy or a good life is or what a fulfilling life is and i really wanted to understand why so i looked back into my own life and i looked at the lives of those around me and i realized that as we're growing up our young and impressionable minds are introduced this is concept of an ideal life by our loved ones our parents and um all of these ideas these life goals this life track isn't necessarily bad for you they simply brainwash you and condition you to believe that achieving that certain ideal life is the only way to have a happy and fulfilling life and somehow in those adolescent years you end up developing this identity for yourself you create this identity that you need to be in order to fit into that ideal life to achieve that ideal life and that identity of ours no matter how different it is from who we truly are we reach out to it time and time again to decide important questions questions like big or small matters like um you know what clothes should i wear what kind of friends i should have what career path should i take all of these questions when we're answering them we switch back to that identity and answer them instead of truly asking ourselves what we want to do and of course there are parts of us that are that do not fit into that mold and it wants to come out who we truly are but we push it down we ignore it because somehow we believe that if we deviate from this track if we listen to this inner voice we would end up deviating from that ideal life we would end up not achieving that ideal life and somehow um we see it our true self as a threat to that ideal happy life and uh, interestingly um take it from my life um i remember that um at the age of 21 i was i wanted as a housewife i wanted to pursue law as an undergrad and i obviously was told by those around me uh, all the reasons why i shouldn't it started off with kya kya zarurat hai ghar pe focus karo uh, bachcho pe focus karo kahan tumhara admission hona hai kya kar logi of course i didn't listen to them i ended up with a distinction in islamic law with an infant to take care of and then at the age of 26 i decided to be a divorced mother and everybody around me told me that uh, all the reasons why i shouldn't of course 
including how I could potentially irrevocably damage my child's mental health. I went ahead with it and mashallah, my, daughter, uh, my daughter's teacher in her actual words is my daughter is the happiest kid in the class who always has a smile on her face. And then at the age of 27, when I decided to join a gym as a dance instructor, because I always wanted to, I was told that you should not be getting into this profession. Of course, I didn't listen to them. I went ahead and did what I wanted to do. And I ended up with a huge clientele and offers from the best gyms in Lahore. And then at the age of 28, I wanted to be a fashion model. Bachpan ka khwab tha, wanted to pursue it, finally had the courage to do it. And uh, obviously I was told that it's not the kind of profession I should be getting myself into. And uh, you know, you're 28, it's a bit too late, you probably shouldn't. And of course, um, as usual, I went ahead with it. And uh, I walked the BCW, I walked the PFDC, I did digital, digital ads and TV ads for brands like Lipton and Walls, and I continue to get these offers and hopefully keep getting them. And then at the age of 29, I wanted to do a master's abroad. Now that was a bit too ambitious of me. And I, I remember people telling me how, um, A, I didn't have the credibility or the qualifications to get any admission in a decent university abroad. And B, how, you know, how cruel I could be to leave my child behind and pursue education and to even dream of such a thing, how, how inhumane I was being. I went ahead and did with it. I ended up with an admission in a, on scholarship in the ninth best law school in the world, where I did two different specializations in business law and public law. <laughs> the point is that each and every time I did what I wanted to do that made me more myself. I obviously, as ridiculous or as unattainable or as extreme it was to everyone around me, I weighed my options, I looked at my choices and I made my decision to be more me and what I wanted to do, take control of my life and do what I wanted to do in my life. And I did this time and time again and I did this regardless of all the reasons thrown at me for why I shouldn't do it. And the more I did it, the more fulfilled and happy I started to become. And interestingly, later on, I did some research on this. Modern psychologists actually agree with this analysis. The more authentic you are in general, the, more, the greater your uh, mental health is, the higher your self-esteem, the lower your stress, the lower your anxiety, depression, all those other symptoms. And obviously it doesn't mean that um, being uh, authenticity causes greater well-being, but it means that it's an important part in your mental psychological health. But it wasn't always this easy for me, of course. I was here and I was I remember I went to, uh, I, when I was at Berkeley, I looked around and there were women from all over the world. And with the ease with which they would make their decisions according to how they wanted to do, what they wanted to do, and how comfortable they were with that freedom. And it just surprised me and shocked me. And I remember I was once sitting with this um, Indian friend of mine, or I was telling her that I want to do something and I was, skeptical about it. I was giving her all the reasons why I shouldn't do it. And I was second guessing myself. And she just looked at me and she stopped me midway and she said, but tumhara kya man hai? First I thought how filmy that was, how Bollywood, like who says man, like dil bolo yaar. But then I realized that she's right. You know, what do I want to do? I never really, I never really thought about that. Ke chha, main jo karna chahti hu, why don't I just go with that? And I realized that we're so used to this conversation back home that Saad Samandar Parbi, in our own minds, we're having a similar conversation. We're giving ourselves each and every reason we can come up with for not pursuing what we truly want to pursue in life. And this freedom to make our choices. We keep, we go through life asking for others to give it to us. We think we don't have that freedom. We think we don't have the ability, the power to make our own decisions. And we complain about it all the time. But the truth is that you are born with this freedom. No one can give it to you and no one can take it away from you. You may fear the repercussions of exercising this freedom, but 
Facing the consequences is not the same as not having that choice in the first place. With a show of hands in this room, um, all those people in life who actually wanted to pursue something and it was a potential serious threat to a relationship of theirs with their loved ones, their family, their friends, their teachers, whoever. Whoever wanted to pursue something, that was a potential threat. Or okay, not, not many, wow. Okay, we have a few here. But out of all of you, come on guys, okay. <laughs> That we have here backstage as well. Okay, so all of you, how many of you actually went ahead and did what they wanted to do, regardless of that threat? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, but the, tru the truth of the matter is that sometimes the consequences can be dire. Sometimes you will disappoint a lot of people, hurt a lot of feelings, and even lose a lot of relationships in your life. But the truth is that as long as you are pretending to be somebody else around them, as long as you're not being your true self around them, you are doing, you're not only hurting yourself by forcing yourself to be someone you're actually not. And B, you're faking it. You're showing and misrepresenting yourself as somebody who you're actually not in, in your, to your loved ones. And you're forcing your mind time and time again. Ke, Go ahead with it. Just keep doing it. You'll, you'll, you know, it's all in pursuit of that happy ideal life. Imagine that you go to a and you and you have that, you take that first sip of that chai. And it's the worst, most horrendous chai you've ever had in your life. Dil rakhne ke liye bologe, thank you, auntie. Bahut achi chai hai. Thank you so much. But do sips pee loge, right? But imagine having that cup of tea every day of your life and telling yourself time and time again, okay, it's good for me, it's good, it's good. Auntie bhi khush hai, main bhi khush hoon, sab khush hai. But of course, ye matlab nahi ke you go to your rishadar ke ghar and you tell them auntie ke muh pe ke auntie, aap bohat ghatiya chai banati hai, iska ye matlab bilkul bhi nahi hai. But obviously, the analogy is on a lighter note. Making decisions to be your authentic self can sometimes have serious consequences and there's a lot at stake. You will lose a lot of important people in your life. But let me tell you something. Those people who actually leave because you are striving to become more yourself, think of it like a natural filtration process. They never loved you. They only loved you, a version of you that they decided you needed to be. But it shouldn't be this hard, of course. It shouldn't be this challenging. This journey to find yourself, to be your authentic self, shouldn't be this heartbreaking. It should be joyous. It should be exciting. It should be to have a facilitating environment. People should encourage you and motivate you to do what you want to do with your life and to pursue all the dreams that you want to pursue. And it's sad that many of us actually never get to. There are so many of us who end up just fulfilling expectations, meeting expectations, and they never get to live that life that they actually truly want to. One thing to remember is that when you pursue your uh, true, truest, authentic self, when you're trying to be, when you try to listen to yourself who you want to be and you pursue that life, that dream, you will get titled, tagged, and sometimes tabooed by society. Do not let them affect you. Do not listen to those whispers. Write your own story. Describe yourself your own way. Use your own words. Do not let them slow you down in your journey to your most truest, authentic self. But above all, hold that same space for everyone around you. Give everyone around you, your peers, your loved one, your family, your friends, that facilitating environment. Encourage them to pursue what they want to pursue to be their most truest, most authentic self. Because when you do that, you empower them. You teach them how to be, how to have courage and how to have independent thought. You teach them how to put your own happiness above others. You teach them how, that not everybody is equal. Not everybody is the same. Sorry, not equal, same. And of course, when you teach them that, you're teaching them the most invaluable trait ever, which is acceptance and tolerance. And these are those traits that are necessary and essential for peace within our hearts and around us.
So next time you have a loved one, you have a dear friend, you have even a stranger comes up to you and is confused about a decision that they want to make and they throw all the reasons at you why they shouldn't make that decision, sit down with them, look them in the eye and ask them, tumhara kya man hai? Thank you for coming to my TED talk.